didn't get a chance to get into the prayer room and uh, get prayed over, but uh, praise God. That's why I'm asking for prayer right now. Amen. Hallelujah. Sister Kathy, amen. Amen. Hey, Brother Todd. Praise God. Uh, let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we plead your blood, Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you, Father, for your love, your perfection, your mercy, your grace, Heavenly Father. Father, right now, I just I just say right now, Father God, I know nothing. I, I, I don't. I, I, I trust in you, Lord Jesus Christ, and you own me. And Lord Jesus, I thank you that you're perfect, that you came from heaven as the only perfect son of God to, to just fulfill everything that we messed up in. Even, even before it was even applied or applicable to me, Lord, I know that you came because you made it available to me, salvation, your salvation. And Lord, in this confession, in this affirmation, Father, forgive me, I'm not trying to sound religious or complicated. You know my heart, Father. I ask for your help. Father, in every worship service, whoever's speaking at your holy pulpit, Father, whatever this is that we call, Father, we make these names up. Father, I pray that with all of our hearts that we're in reverence to you, Lord Jesus Christ, that we speak your authority, that we're that we're worshiping you, Holy Spirit. That Holy Spirit, you're the one that gives us the words to say. And I know this, Father God, to be true. In, in Pastor John and Elder Charles and whoever speaks, like uh, Sister Rocky, that Father, that, that anointing is still in the overflow. Many souls right now are still being touched by that testimony. Father, I just thank you because I can feel your stillness. Oh, Father, I need your help in what you wanted done today. And, and even as I speak to your holy people, I don't know how it's going to be done, but you always do it. Um, Father, I'm sorry when I hurt you. I'm sorry when I get busy. Uh, and then at the same time when I'm busy, I try to make excuses. Father, I'm sorry. And I confess that in front of all your holy people that, Father, I ask you to change me. And I know that, Lord Jesus, that I'm forgiven. But Father, I never want to be the same. I always want your presence is all I want, Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit, I thank you that your anointing, your presence has sealed us for all eternity. You know everyone here by name, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you are our God, and all we want to do is bless your holy presence. And we ask you right now, Holy Spirit, to teach us. Speak through me, O Lord, and I just thank you, Father, that I'm covered by your blood. And Father God, have your way with us. We boldly declare right now, Father, that, that as we worship your holy presence, that it flows from within the Holy of Holies, that, Father God, we know, you know the desires of our heart. You know every soul that we're lifting up in prayer. You know every bit of bondage. You know everything, Father, for you are God Almighty. So, Father, in this worship service, we just come to you trusting you, Lord, and just blessing your holy presence. And it's in Jesus Christ, holy and mighty and precious and sweet name that we pray. And all God's beloved said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you guys. Amen. Praise God. Buddy, how you doing? Hallelujah. It's so good to see you guys. Amen. So the question that we have tonight is, do you believe? And this is a big one. Amen. Do you believe? Say with me, I believe. I believe. And for those of you who have actually spoken that out, remember, the reason why, I don't have to give a reason the Holy Spirit said to say this. If we don't use our voice to speak our faith, you're just a sitting duck. If you don't use your voice to speak your faith, you're just a sitting duck. But once you apply your voice with your faith and you practice confessing, now God's word is released into the atmosphere. Amen. Can I get an amen? God's word is released into the atmosphere. Hallelujah. See, I grew up, I grew up, oh, I'm never going to amount to nothing. I'm always going to be like this. I'm always going to be sick and tired. I'm never going to have anything good. Oh, everywhere I go is just, it's just destruction. Oh, nobody loves me. Nobody, nobody, this is, I grew up speaking that way. Because you know why the devil hurt me at a little age, right? You don't have to be little to be hurt. I just got hurt this week. I'm a big boy. I didn't act like a big boy. Right? So the question is, is that we are asking ourselves, do I believe? 
You see, it's easy for us to say we believe because whether it was on that glorious day that we received Jesus Christ as Lord and we went through all the emotions and, you know, it was just so overwhelming and it flooded my heart. And yes, it's all Holy Spirit. That's who God is, right? That's who God is. I received Jesus and I know that I'm saved. But now the question remains, do I believe? Right? Do I believe? You see, God right now is asking this of you. Do you believe in me? And this is where we're going to start. And once again, in my prayer, I don't know how this is going to go, but Holy Spirit said this is what He wants. He wants to open up with John 12. We touched on it in the past, but He says, now nah, it's for such a time as this. And if you notice, John 14 is just up there because we're going through the whole John 14. That's a big one. Right, Pastor? That's a big one. Amen. So please, amen. I pray you cancel all the <laughs> events for this evening. <laughs> but what I love is being surrounded by worshipers where it's like, well, let's just go. Amen. Holy Spirit, let's just do it. That's what we're going to do. Amen. Jesus cried out, whoever believes in me does not believe in me only, but in the one who sent me. King James Version translate on me. Big difference. On me, in me. But the general idea in what Holy Spirit is speaking is even Lord Jesus Christ says, if you truly believe in me, if you say you believe in me, if you say and call yourself a Christian, look, look at what Lord Jesus is saying. It's up here on the screen, family. Get rid of looking at me or hear, hear Holy Spirit, okay? Hear what Holy Spirit is saying. Lord Jesus himself is looking at his disciples saying, if you believe in me, you don't just believe in me. You don't just believe in me. Because if you do that, the devil got you. Oh, hallelujah. Come on now. Get ready now. Virginia, if you believe in me, Joey Karagnan, if you believe in Joey Karagnan, I have a spirit, soul, and body. Which means you see my body. But when I go, you know my spirit. Right? You know how she knows my soul? She's one of my very few beloved sisters that when she goes to Kroger, she specifically looks for vegan cup of noodles because that's my favorite. And she knows that I think about that a lot. And she buys them for me. Give God praise. I mean, that's all Holy Spirit. You know my soul, right? And this is how the Bible is laid out for us, beloved church family. Old covenant, Old Testament, you see God's soul. You see his character. You see what he likes and what he dislikes, right? You see it. It doesn't take a, a, a surgeon or anybody who has all these degrees and stripes. These are my eagle wings. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Eagle wings. Amen. And Sister Kathy got eagle wings. But you, you, you get to learn about his soul. Then boom. Hallelujah. Here comes the dynamite. His name is Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, Hallelujah. And here Lord Jesus Christ is saying, I am. I am with the Father, the Father is with me. Amen. I don't want to jump ahead, but in the one who sent me. Here is the New Testament now. There's a new story. And Lord Jesus Christ is saying, okay, you guys study God. You have all these names for God. You are so religious and so righteous. And here Lord Jesus is saying, but you're missing it. That's why I had to come. And even though he was standing right there in the flesh, and all these people who studied God, knew everything, they would look right at him, hey, who do you think you are? Because they were blinded by this religion, this veil, the Bible says, that covered their understanding, that covered their spiritual eyes to see God for who He is, a loving Father. Say with me, God loves me. God loves you. There's no question as far as God loving you because of this man, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Can you hear an amen? There's no question. 
Listen, it doesn't matter as far as what message somebody has to preach or what the testimony is. Nothing can ever change the fact that God loves every soul. Amen. Why? Jesus Christ came. Amen. And Lord Jesus Christ came in this flesh. And now he's starting to talk to people. Right, Sister Catholic Church? starts at 630. He, started, he starts talking to people and he says, look, I know you think you know God. You're doing all these things to worship him. But let me tell you about God because I come from there. Amen. <laughs> How awesome is that? I come from there. He's my daddy. Amen. I'm his son. We're one. Amen. Amen. Say it with me. I am I one. one. The power and the anointing that you speak of right now as we worship the Lord Jesus Christ is that his holy presence is in you. Right, Sister Denise? Right, Brother Jimmy? That nice haircut of yours, praise God. I love it. Amen. I love it. God is so head over heels in love with you, it's beyond what we can comprehend. Amen. 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 But guess what? When we try to understand God, when we try to get religious with God, or better yet, when we try to live life without God and with the label, I'm a Christian, but I'm living life the way I want to live, but I'm a Christian, there's problems. Can I get an amen? amen. And we're going to get into that. Praise God. You see, what always took place, even at this moment in time, is Lord Jesus Christ kept telling everybody, everybody, the Father is in me. Amen. And I am in the Father. And he proved that in this picture. I lay down my life because it is the Father's will that I must do this to fulfill what has been written. Amen. And this is why Lord Jesus Christ is known as the Word of God. Amen. 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 Notice it's not words. There's no S. One word. The Bible consists of all these words, right? But here, God Almighty is saying, He is the Word. Amen. 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 Say His name, Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> all right, praise God. We can get started. Hallelujah. Y'all excited? Yeah. Oh, I'm so excited. Are you happy to be here? Yeah. I believe in declaring that God is going to perform miracles tonight. And then he has been performing miracles. Hallelujah. There has been such fire flowing through his church. Amen. Amen. And I believe in declaring over every soul here, over Facebook. Hallelujah. I'm believing people watch on Facebook. Go, oh my goodness. That's nothing to do with Joey. That's nothing to do. It's all Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Say his name, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Let's bless him like we know. Just say, Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. One more time. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. One more time. Holy Spirit, come. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. How does God, how does God have many rooms in heaven? And how would Lord Jesus Christ know that? I come from there. Amen. Right? How can you talk about Disneyland if you never met Mickey Mouse in person? Right? You can't tell me how awesome Disneyland is if you've never been. Because I'm the kind of brother that would be like, all right, where are we going? Okay, who's driving? Do you know where you're going? Do we need GPS? I'm, I'm just that kind of person. I'll ask you all kinds of questions. So when we get there, who's going to be there? Right? And don't you love this about Lord Jesus Christ? Here he is talking intimately about rooms in heaven. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. I pray. I pray. I pray. Listen, whether you like me or not, I pray that when, when all of our mansions are in the same neighborhood. Amen. Hallelujah, I do, I pray that in Jesus' name. You know why? Hallelujah! Because in this vapor of a life, here we are. Right? Our lives are like that. It's faster than that. Yeah. But by the grace and mercy of God, He chose us. He chose everybody now. He predestined everybody to go to heaven. It's a choice. Right? He, by default, wants everybody to be with Him. Amen? Amen? Amen. But it's up to you whether you want Him or not. Amen? Amen. But because we chose Him, we want Him. Now that we're worshiping together as open arms community church, as one body of Lord Jesus Christ, unified in His Holy Spirit, I pray that we're all in the same neighborhood. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I pray that in Jesus' name. Oh my goodness. Praise God. My Father's house has many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me. 
And you also may be where I am. And then look at verse 4. This is what Lord Jesus Christ is, is telling his apostles and everybody, Sister Tatiana, who has ears to hear. You can tell that he's so excited talking about, right? He's talking about the Father's house. Oh, hallelujah. I mean, you can just feel how excited Agape is. Lord Jesus is like, oh my goodness, right? It's like, kind of like, who watched, who watched Elf? Elf and Will Ferrell, right? Oh, Santa! I know him! Right? I mean, like, all that excitement, right? Like, I know him! You know, and, and then when, of course, when, when Will Ferrell went to Santa, he's like, you're not Santa. Right? You're not Santa, right? Now, 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 now hear me, don't get all, don't get all in his fit because I brought him health. Come on now, family, we're worshiping God, amen? But here's Lord Jesus Christ talking about God, amen. my Father. And he's like, listen, there's, there's many rooms in heaven. And I'm telling you, why would I tell you this? If I didn't know, because I come from there, that I'm going to prepare a place for you. And you will, in a matter of the next half an hour, you will be with me. Yeah. Hallelujah. You will be with me. Yeah. And listen to the first four. You know the way to the place where I am going. You know the way to the place where I'm going. There, Thomas, oh God, you gotta love Thomas. You gotta love Thomas, right? Yeah. You gotta love Thomas. Forgive my accent, but I'm just gonna do it because Holy Spirit said I could, okay? Lord, we don't know where you're going. So how can we say we know the way? A beloved servant of God that has walked with Jesus talked with Jesus, got to touch Jesus, got to see the miraculous after the miraculous performed before his very eyes. May I tell you, just like you, I've seen many, many miracles. And the conviction comes is when I see all these miracles. I mean, not too long ago, your beloved husband was here, Brother William. Brother William called me and it was like close to midnight. He says, God laid it on my heart. We need to go pray for sisters in the hospital. Brother William picks me up. We go. We go to the hospital. We pray over this person. But before we pray, Holy Spirit says, Oh, there's Brother William. Praise God. Church starts at 30. <laughs> You're always on time, though. Praise God. I love that, brother. He tells me all the time. I'm always on time. You know why? Jesus Christ is Lord. Can I get an amen? The holiday. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? It's the truth. So Brother William calls me at midnight. It's around midnight. He knows. He knows. Above all, God, God knows. Me, so. He picks me up and we go to the hospital. And so the whole time, Brother William and I, we're just praying the whole way. We're praying, praying. We get there and Holy Spirit says, I want you to anoint her feet. I've never done this before. I've always anointed for those of you that I was, I'm blessed to pray over. I'm not worthy to. Lord Jesus is. I anoint you on your head. Right? Father, Son, Holy Spirit. This time, William was there. God said, anoint her on her feet, Pastor. So we did. Got to hug and love and everything, and we just started worshiping and praying right there. Little did we know that she was to die on that bed. May I ask you, did William's hands go down in prayer? Did my hands go down in prayer? We just stood still. Can I get an amen? We kept on praying until the nurses and doctors come running in. They asked us to leave. Her beloved husband had to leave. We left. We just kept on worshiping. We kept on saying, no, there's a reason why God has us here. We stood outside with her beloved husband, cried with him, said, look, God has us here. It's going to be okay. About 10 minutes later, 10, 15 minutes, maybe a little longer, 10, 15 minutes. We don't know because you know how it is when you're worshiping God. Can you get an amen? amen? 10, 15 minutes later, the doctors come out and say, she's okay. She's all right. <coughs> she's alive. Amen. Yeah. Now, praise God, I wish, I, wish, I wish it always could be that way, right? But my, the point that I'm making is, when we get out of what the natural looks like and just trust in God, 
It allows God to, to be God. It allows God to be God of that situation, right, of that circumstance. And so here Thomas is saying, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Which is a valid, it's a valid statement coming from a disciple because here you are talking about heaven. You're talking about the Father's house. You're talking about all these rooms. You're talking about this place that you prepared for me and that you're going to take me there. Well, I want to go. And everybody knows what's coming up. This is what Lord Jesus Christ said. I am the way, Amen. the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Amen? Amen. Say it with me. Say it with me. Father God, Father God Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus Christ. Is, one. is one. Amen. And so this is this is the breakthrough that God has for us. Then Philip said, Lord, show us the Father. And that will be enough for us. The reason why God wants to teach this tonight is because here are our brothers and sisters that are there that are standing in the presence of Lord Jesus. Just like I can see you, beloved Kathy, they're looking at Agape. They're looking at Jesus. And God Almighty, I pray that this is registering in you. If not, please do this. Get out of your head. Amen? Get out of your head. Please just get out of religion. Look! These disciples are looking at Jesus as Jesus tells them about heaven, about the rooms, about going there, and about the way to go there. And then question arises, and he says, I am the way. The Father and I, we are one. But then here you got Philip. Oh, Brother Philip. Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Holy Spirit wants to hear from your heart. You don't even have to repeat it after me. Pray about it before you say it. The Holy Spirit wants to hear from your heart. My Lord Jesus Christ is enough. You see, it wasn't enough for these disciples. And here they are looking at Jesus. And they have the audacity to say, well, okay, just show us the Father. And that will be enough for us then. They still wouldn't get it. They were still struggling with the fact that how are you one with God and God is in you and you are in Him. I hear it. I see all the things that you're doing. But I still don't understand how this is possible. And God continued. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip? Even after I've been among you such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father? My question to you, beloved church family, do you believe that? Yes. That Christ the Messiah who came on this world is the Father that came in the flesh. Yes. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, we cannot, we cannot separate. We cannot divide them. Amen? And then it continues on and says this, look. The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me, who is doing his work, believe me when I say that, I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Look at the fruit. Here's a warning from Holy Spirit. Be careful who you open yourself up to. Be careful who you consider Holy and righteous, because there's only hope, one holy and righteous. Amen. Amen. Be careful putting man on a pedestal. Amen. Rebuke that. Don't ever put me, Pastor. I can speak for Pastor or one. Jesus said, "We're going to be standing there accountable." Don't put any. Only put Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Only one pedestal. Only one way. Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The reason why Holy Spirit wants to put out this warning to everybody 
is that if you are associating yourself with a so-called Christian, yes, I said so-called. If you're upset, take it up with the Lord. Amen? But if the so-called Christian doesn't have evidence of Holy Spirit fruit in their life, it's a wolf. I'm the bad guy now? No. No. Do we have wolves in here? Because if you are a wolf, let me cut your head off. Right? If you say you are a Christian, what fruit are you producing from your life? Now, by the grace of God, I look around, I know every one of you, praise God, just overflowing, gooder and gooder, in Jesus' name, amen? All of God's presence, His fruit, His love, joy, peace, all of Galatians 5 fruit is overflowing in your life. So there is no question, right, Brother Todd, as far as where I stand with my Lord, because the presence of my God Almighty and the evidence of His fruit, Holy Spirit right now is questioning, though, what company do you keep? Right? Now, I'm all about being obedient to God and stepping out and loving on people and ministering and sharing Jesus. Can you hear an amen? Amen. Because that's being obedient to Holy Spirit's leading and guiding. Yes. However, what Holy Spirit is warning us right now is something different. So I need, I need to be clear when I address this. Is that what are we allowing that it comes and it oppresses the Holy of Holies? Whether it's bad influence, whether it's, whether it's friends that don't want anything to do with Jesus and they've made it clear to you, I question, are you asking Holy Spirit for wisdom and anointing of how to minister to them? Because believe it or not, it's in these situations where God is speaking clearly as far as His instructions over your life. You never know it may be the end of a season. Yeah, I said it. What I'm finding out real shortly here is there's a lot of Christians that have trouble saying no. Can I tell you that's, that's, that's a deception of the devil? It's pride. It's godly to say no. It's godly to say, I, I'm, I'm not doing that. Oh, but it's so great in this ministry and all this stuff. I'm not doubting it. And I'm going to be in prayer. The Holy Spirit has me where I am right now. Amen? Amen. And the same goes as far as in this stage in your life. Listen, I don't know who I'm speaking to, but I know that I'm speaking to many. That sometimes we take it upon ourselves to do something where God is saying, will you stop and let me be God? Amen? Amen. Amen. Will you stop, right? And let me be God. Because sometimes when you Bible talk somebody or you try to push your relationship with God on them, it's up to them. And what we wind up doing is we wind up pushing them away. When God is saying, listen, just focus on the Holy One and allow His presence to bless you. The reason why this is so important right now in this day and age in the church is because there's all this emotion right now in the church. Oh, I want to go to the next big thing. Oh, I want to listen to the next best praise and worship team. Oh, I want to listen to the next best preacher. Oh, I want to do this great ministry over here. What's happening when you move here? Move there, move there, move there. You're not being rooted. Amen. Right? God says, why don't you just be still and know that I am God and allow me to bless you and saturate you and to fill you. Amen? Hallelujah! Believe on the evidence of the works themselves. There's evidence. Hallelujah. Being a child of God, there's evidence. If you tell me that you are a Christian, but yet you act the same way that you was 20 years ago, where's the evidence? I'm the bad guy. Some of you look at me like I'm the bad guy. Right? Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Got permission. Hallelujah. If there's no evidence, something is missing. Something is wrong and I'm begging you. Will we get right with the Lord and allow Him to be God of our lives? Amen? Allow Him to be God of our families. God, allow Him to be God of our wives. God of our husbands. God of our children. God of our finances. Amen? Joey, how do I do that? Joey, how do I do that? Give it. Amen? Give it to God. Amen? You have to lay it down in this house. I can't do it for you. Amen? I can't do it for you. Very truly, 
tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. Oh my goodness! So you're talking about, as you, beloved child of God, hallelujah, Sister Kathy, you're just blessing heaven in the overflow. You, say with me, that's me. That's me. Say with me, that's me. You, as a blood-bought, beloved child of God, Jesus Christ is your Lord. The anointing of God Almighty, His resurrection power, lives in you and through you. You, you, that sits right there, God Almighty saying, you can do greater things than what Lord Jesus Christ did. How is it that we're going to sit in this life or live this life? Oh, no, is me. Oh, nobody likes me. Nobody. It ain't about you. It's all about him. Can I hear an amen? When you wake Oh, come on. Hallelujah. Sister Sienna, let me see your hands. Praise God. Let me see your hands. Amen. Praise God in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Beloved daughter of God. Look, look at the Holy Spirit fruit. Amen. Amen. Mm. Now I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name. And I will do it. Somebody asked me, well, preacher, there you go, cringing again. Right? Preacher, I asked Jesus to hit the lottery. I didn't hit no lottery. Did you ever get that, Pastor? Yeah. <laughs> Come on now, preacher, I asked God to hit the lottery. How come I hit the lottery? Deceitful heart. Praise God you didn't hit the lottery. You wind up in the ground. Buy a zebra, try to ride it or something. Buy a giraffe, I don't know. All that money, go buy a giraffe and try to ride it. I don't know where that comes from. But everybody for life. Right? But isn't it, isn't it amazing though? God knows what's for our own good. Can I get it? God knows what's for our own good. You see, Brother Todd, you, you beloved son of God, you go through things that I don't go through, but yet we share so many similarities. But by his grace and mercy, you go through things that I don't go through. I go through things that you don't go through. But in being one, as sons of God, being united, unified with the Spirit, we know that we trust Lord Jesus because despite what we go through, God, you got us. Amen? That's it. That's the bottom line, right? But see, Father knows what's for our own good. You see, I wouldn't survive one day in Todd's shoes. Anointed man of God. I'm not one to judge him, but I know that when I pray for him, God reveals things to me. You're not hearing me. You're not hearing me. You're not listening. We're so quick to judge family. I just told a beloved couple, you got to honor my family closer than anything in this world because it's God's blood that makes us family. It's biblical now. In my life, it's God. Hallelujah. God first. Amen. Trish. Amen. Church family. And family. All God's business. Amen. But notice that when I see struggles or when I hear or minister or whatever, it's easy to quickly judge a person. And that's the fight, right? That's the fight because I'm not judging. And immediately when the enemy, the darkness, wants to try to creep in, how do you fight that with God's light and God's Holy Spirit anointing? The moment that you start thinking that you're judging, Father, I thank you that I see this fruit. And Father, rather than judging the fruit for darkness to come in, Father God, I speak against this fruit of deception. I speak against this fruit of sickness. I speak against this fruit of cancer. I speak against it, Father, because Holy Spirit, it's not you. And Holy Spirit, I know that right now as I speak life and blessings, I plead your blood, Lord Jesus Christ, over your beloved church, open arms to me, church, over every soul that has ears to hear, over everybody on Facebook, Father God, that right now I say, let there be light! Yeah. Hallelujah! I know, Lord Jesus Christ, you do it right now. Glory to God, because I know that the power of the Word of God is Jesus. It's the Word. Can you get an amen? Right, Brother Cindy, it's the Word. We speak the Word of God, and God says that Word will not come back empty. Amen? amen? If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and He will give you another advocate to help you, and 
have been with you forever. <sighs> Notice that if you love me, these are the only two commandments we as a new covenant church must. Say that word with me, must. Uh, I don't say this in a legalistic tone, right, Brother Joey? I don't. I'm just saying it because God said we must, which means it's a must. Get out of religion, get out of theology, get out of opinion. None of that matters right now because God's speaking. This is a must. That we must love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Can I get an amen? amen? And when we do that, right? Oh, come on now. When we do that, we know the only one. Say with me, only one. Only one. The only one who is capable of loving Father God this way, his name is Holy Spirit. So now we know Holy Spirit in us, we're going to bless you every moment we can. Every chance. Does this mean that you're perfect? I love your... <laughs> Sister Rogan said, <laughs> Amen. Ain't that the truth? No. But the beauty is, is that every time we mess up, Holy Spirit's right there. As a loving father. I think of a baby. I think of a baby just starting to get to walk, right? Right? And then, ah, bless me when I see Brooklyn. And you see the baby about to fall. Or maybe it did fall. And right away, daddy or mommy just come. Right? That's our father. And his name is Holy Spirit. That still, small voice. That encouraging word. The reminder. Only Holy Spirit can tell you things. That is only straight from the Father. He never says anything on his own. Amen. And that is the order of God Almighty. Amen? Amen? He will help you forever. The spirit of truth. The world does, cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But he, but you know him for he lives with you and will be where? In you. In you. Amen? In you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long the world will not see me anymore. But you will see me because I live, you also will live. On that day you will realize that I am in the Father and you are in me. And I am in you. Amen. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. So what's the second part of the command? Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Amen. So the question is, is God racist? <clears throat> huh? Who is this big in Kentucky? Is God racist? No. Let's be bold about it, right? So if there's racism in your heart, is God in your heart? No. Whose fruit is racism? Satan. Satan. So let's not be deceived, amen? Is God a pervert? Is God a liar? No. Is God double-minded? No. You see, right now, Father's saying, you know who I am because my soul is in your soul. It's eternal. And Father, give us the anointing through the power of Holy Spirit, that resurrection power to take these thoughts captive. Mm. Amen? Here lately because it's getting warm, Pastor, and you see me when I'm at the house or outside doing this. Mosquitoes. Oh, rebuke them, Lord. Amen. And it's funny because sometimes I get an out-of-body experience, Pastor, where I think, what if my neighbors are watching me right now? I pray that they're like, oh, he's really excited for Jesus, right? Because sister, sister man, I'm walking around. I mean, I'm not that doing all this stuff, you know, like. And, but, but God allowed me to share that with you because what about those bad thoughts? Don't allow those bad thoughts to come. Kill it. How do you kill it? Father, I thank you. I thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, that this thought used to take me back into depression, but now this thought brings me to praise. Amen. Amen. It brings me to praise. Oh, it gets gooder. It gets gooder. Father, I thank you that the enemy used to 
would make me think about my child and it would bring me down a season of depression and worry. But Father, because I trust in your perfect work in Christ, I speak your word that as this thought comes, I praise you, Father, for that's your child. And that you, Father God, have anointed them. And you will never let them go because, Lord Jesus Christ, you promised. And I give you all the glory, honor, and praise. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Fire. Fire. Praise God. The one who loves me will, don't you love this? Be loved. Amen. Say it with me. I am. I am. My beloved. My beloved. This is it. You can, you can either say that you're loved or you could be loved. If you notice that something Holy Spirit has us speaking over each other umpteen times a day when we see each other. Whether it's in the community or when we visit each other, right? Hello, beloved. Hello, beloved of God, right? Because that's who you be. Amen? Don't you love that another word, another term for amen is so be it? So be it. God is saying, you said amen, so be the blessing. So be it. Be the miracle. You said amen. You want breakthrough in your family? Amen. Say amen. amen. So be it. Amen. Be the breakthrough. Amen. Be the breakthrough in your family. Listen, anybody could just sit here. Well, God, why don't you do something about this over here? Well, God, why don't you do something over here? Well, God, why don't you do this? Well, God, why don't you do Well, God, why... you know what? I... God, I don't... God, why... Say it with me, amen. amen. God is saying right now, you be it. So be it. So be the change. Be the blessing. Be the miracle. Right? Be the light in the darkness. Be it. Amen? We can celebrate resurrection power all we want, but the true resurrection power isn't floating around, isn't in heaven, it's in you. The resurrection power of Christ is in you. That's where the mystery is all right now. The power of God Almighty is in you. It's Jesus your Lord. He is my Lord, my Savior. That means the resurrection power of Holy Spirit is alive in me. And God gives me this power. How do you display this power first and foremost? One, real quick. One, be thankful. That will change your life beyond your comprehension. If you can just be thankful. Well, Brother Joey, you just don't know. You're right, I don't. But what I didn't know is Jesus is Lord. Amen. Well, can I tell you, people hate that. Because they want me to be a part of the pity party. They want me to be a part of listening to the sob story. I will listen. I will empathize. I'll have compassion. And I know. I know, praise God, it's all His anointing how to pray. I know the schemes of the devil. I, I just I just shared that with you. The schemes and the plots of the enemy is for you to be the judge. He's the only judge. Amen. God just sent me here to right? God just sent me here to just to just shine his light, right, Brother Bruce? Just just be a blessing. So be it. Say with me, so be it. So be it. But it comes to the point where am I going to allow the psalm story to continue? Or when Holy Spirit says, enough, am I bold enough, Joey Craig, to say, enough. No more. Sometimes I say, okay, you'll see me do this, okay. Believe it or not, some people still try to talk over that, and it just gets faster. <laughs> you know, like, just stop talking. Okay, you said your piece, that's enough. Now may I speak. Believe it or not, some people say, no, I don't want to hear what you guys say. Okay, well, I'll pray for you. See, that's a test. That's a test. Am I going to allow that hurt to take offense and now allow in pride for that offense, that darkness to come in and which manifests insecurities? And it's in those insecurities that the devils are going to call more doubt, worry? No. The beauty of our God is God already knew that was going to take place. And all Father is asking from any beloved child of God is, when that conversation is done, will you pray for him? I pray every conversation ends with, 
holding hands in prayer, or you know, on, on, however you pray. I, I pray all conversations, but sometimes it doesn't end that way. Sometimes you just have to walk away from it, and whether you're walking and just praying, or when you're in the car and you're just bawling your eyes out, God knows. But remember, don't let that darkness come in. Amen? Amen. Say it with me. Say it with me. I am, I am my beloved. My beloved. By my Father, and, to, and I too will love them and show myself to them. Then Judas, not Judas Iscariot, said, But Lord, why do you intend to show yourself to us and not the world? Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them. And say it with me, we. we. Oh, here it gets gooder and gooder. Oh. Amen? Come on, Brother David. We will come to them and make our home with them. Amen. Amen. Where's God's house? Powerful, beloved church family. Right, Brother David? God's house is here in this earthly vessel. Who am I? Right? Who am I? And the beauty is, he defines who am I. I'm property of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is not a vacant house. Oh, that makes me so sad here in Kentucky when I drive through and I see vacant homes. And they're beautiful homes and they're just being run down. Or, you know what I mean? It, it, I don't own a home. I have one in heaven. We, we rent. We rent. And this has always been on my heart when I drive around and I see just these homes abandoned. Pastor, you must feel this way because you build them, praise God. And you, you know, it, it just it just does something to me when I see that, you know, because immediately I can picture in the past families that lived there. Right? But now you drive and you just see it boarded up, or maybe some. Praise God, a parable, a lot of them are being re renovated. But then some, you know, you just see that they're just being torn down, right? Boarded up, the roof is caving in. You see, in the same way, that's how I see a soul who's running away from the Lord Jesus Christ. That's how I see a soul who doesn't want anything to do with Lord Jesus. An empty house. You see, we, as children of God, God has made his residence in here for eternity. But he, he is also a merciful God where he gives us free will. And I'm asking you in this free will tonight, will you challenge yourself in such a way that you want to come to this altar changing the way, now hear me now, you believe. There's many of you, there's many of you that say, well, I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe God the Father. I believe that agape, I believe that I am a child of God, I believe all this. But see, that's where we get trapped in what we believe. God is saying, let my presence be enough, and then he will truly know what believing is. Amen. Because believe it or not, we can, tell, we can talk all day. I can't control what you believe, you can't control what I believe, right? And praise God, we have the Holy Bible that's written from front to back, right? And we know. But even in that, don't you agree, we still mess up. Right? I mean, look at how many doctrines there are. Look at how many religions there are, right? What God is asking from us tonight, what God is asking from Facebook tonight, is when, maybe the time is now, when you get on your knees and pray and ask God, Father, don't let me limit you in anything. I want to believe, Father God, the way you want me to believe. Because here, Lord Jesus Christ is saying, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Who is we? So the question is, is God control of your thoughts? Are we honoring Lord Jesus Christ in his body? And are we blessing Holy Spirit, making sure that there's no other spiritual, demonic strongholds, generational things that are... Maybe that's some of you right now. Maybe some of you have been dealing with 
some kind of bondage that you're like, how come I can't shake this thing? Well, right now, God has identified it in your life, and He said, give it to me at the altar. The question is, will you be obedient and come here? It's not hard. And get on your knees, cry or whatever, pray, and say, Father, you showed me what that generational curse, that bondage was, that the enemy has put. And I want nothing to do with it. And right now I confess it and I don't want it in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you. But the Advocate, say his name, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Whom the Father will send in my name will teach you all things, remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I will leave you, leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. Amen. Isn't it amazing that this world functions on fear? Trouble, chaos, right? Drama, garbage, right? It's like a toilet. Right? And look what Lord Jesus Christ. Do not let. Listen, family. When Agape says, do not let, that means you have the power. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen? When God Almighty says, do not let, He has already anointed you with power. And He's telling you, don't let this happen. Amen. What does God say? Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not be afraid. You heard me say I'm going away and I'm coming back to you. If you love me, you would be glad that I am going to the Father. For the Father is greater than I. Hallelujah. I have told you now before it happens. So that when it does happen, you will say with me, believe. I will not say much more to you. For the prince of this world is coming. Oh, but it gets gooder and gooder. He has no hold over me. <laughs> he has no hold over me. Now let me ask you something. Is this the resurrection, resurrected, glorified Jesus speaking? Or is this the before crucifixion Jesus? Before. Come on now family, let's worship. Let's worship now. Here Lord Jesus is speaking. Before he's even on that cross for you and me. And he's saying, the devil has no hold over me. Yeah. He's already speaking it, right? See, it's time right now, church family, for us to start speaking against things like cancer. Can you see cancer? Why don't you speak to cancer and say, cancer, you have no hold over me. Yeah. Can, you see, can you see COVID? Why don't you start speaking? COVID, you have nothing to do with me in my house. Amen? Amen. Addiction. Can you see addiction? No. You can see the aftermath of it. Why don't we speak it? Addiction, you have no hold over me. Amen. Hallelujah. What else we got? Poverty? Lack? Depression? Anxiety? Confusion? Double-mindedness? Let's all say it. You have no hold over me. Hallelujah. And let's just make it good and good. In Jesus' name, amen. And God says, so be it. Oh, hallelujah. You hear that? And God said, so be it. You said, amen. God gave you the authority and the power. You spoke it. God said, let me be God. I got it. I'll take care of it. But now Father God is saying, so be it. So what does so be it mean? I'm going to start acting like it. I'm not going to have the same thoughts of before. Amen. Hmm. Amen. And again, amen. amen. I'm not going to think that way anymore, Brother Jim. Because I said amen. And God says now, so be it. Well, Brother, stop! I don't want to hear it no more. We just prayed. We just talked about it. It is done. It's nailed to the cross. It's on his body. It is washed clean by his blood. It's done. Amen. So be it. Oh, hallelujah. I love the Father and, and, and do exactly what my Father has commanded me. How many believe that the Lord Jesus Christ 
did everything Amen. to perfection Amen. in what Father God wanted. Amen? Amen. And he, we know this to be true. Hallelujah. That's why we have the new covenant. That's why he's alive on the inside. If Lord Jesus Christ was not perfect, we wouldn't be saved. There'd be no Holy Spirit in us. There'd be no manifestation of his godly fruit. Right? There would be no, no, nothing. No difference. You cannot tell me. Don't you love that? I was talking to a beloved daughter of God just a couple days ago. And I told her, nobody can take away the fact that God loves you. Amen. Amen. And it's so sweet of her because we were just talking and she's just like, you know what? I, I know that. And I said, no preacher, no doctrine, nobody can change your mind how much God loves you. Why? Because Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. 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 Say with me, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is, Lord. is Lord. So we're going to finish up. Come now, let us. Let us. Say with me, let us. Yes. Leave. And you guys know what's happening. Right? Isn't it beautiful that Lord Jesus Christ ends all of this in John 14. And he says, come now, let us leave. We know who us is, right? Father. Amen. And in that, whole, in that whole chapter, that's what God was doing. Was speaking through a God by himself in the flesh. Saying, listen. Don't try to understand God because He's God Almighty. He's beyond your understanding. But trust. Trust. You believe in Jesus Christ, believe also in Holy Spirit. That's the new covenant church now. That's the new word right now. That's the new word. God is saying, you believe in Jesus Christ, now believe in Holy Spirit. That's the disconnect right now. People want to believe in Lord Jesus Christ, but they want nothing to do with Holy Spirit. Guess what? That's demonic. Do we need to go back? Do we need to go back to the very first scripture? Jesus said, if you believe in me, you don't only believe in me. Amen. He's speaking to us. Right. If you believe in Jesus, Jesus is saying, you don't only believe, don't do that. Because when you do that, you take a man and make it an idol. Right. But here's Jesus saying, I am God. Jesus is saying, I am Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And it's all in one. Can I get an amen? amen. We know the absolute truth and what's already been displayed and it's just the overflow of what's been happening. Lord Jesus Christ displayed being one with the Father in His perfect work on that cross. He laid it down for us. And He displayed it in the resurrection power of Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And this is the true picture of who Lord Jesus Christ is. Amen. Amen. If you all would stand up with me, praise God. Once again, as a brother in Christ, as a pastor, I'm not charged to change the way you personally believe. I, I, don't, I don't have the ability to do that. But by the grace and mercy of God, by the anointing power of Holy Spirit, I can worship Lord Jesus Christ with you. And in absolute truth of the written word and the absolute truth of his holy presence, his conviction can fall upon your heart. And God Almighty can change everything that you thought you believed or knew. His presence right now, Father, is just asking, will you just believe in Lord Jesus Christ and allow Holy Spirit right now to bless you as He saturates you, as He sanctifies you? His blessings, His presence, His anointings will flow through you like a mighty ocean. He will wash things away right now. Father God is asking, will you come to this altar? Now pastor and the leaders are going to be up here. Of course, they're going to spend time at this altar as well. But they're going to be ready to pray over you. Remember, I encourage you to go to somebody different. It's easy for us to go to that same person that we know and have a relationship, right? But go to somebody different. Maybe it's confessing your sins. Right? Maybe we have been real quick to just speak what we wanted to speak. Maybe it's outburst or outrage. Right? Maybe it's cussing. I don't know what it is. But will you give that at the altar today? Amen?